Okay, so in this problem, which is number 5 in the web assign and number 18 in Survey and Jewett chapter 24, we finally get to the, um, uh, to the left-hand side of the flux equation. So in the first problem, part A, we have a, we have a sphere here, and what we have uh, penetrating that sphere is a uniform electric field, E, and you can see here it goes from left to right. So every field line that enters the sphere also must e exit the sphere. And so the question states, what is the um, flux through the through this blue sphere uh, due to those electric field lines? And because every field line enters and every field line exits, the net flux is going to be zero. And there's no charge on the inside. So we submit our answer to check it. Okay. And we know that there's no charge on the inside because the same number of, of uh, electric field lines come into the sphere as leave. This is not true for the cylinder. And so here we see on the right edge, the right face of the cylinder, we see electric fields leaving. And on the left, we see electric fields also leaving. So that must mean that there must be a, a positive charge on the inside of the sphere. If it were just a a you know a, a uniformly uh, like, a, like a spherical charge or a proton or something like that then we would not get this you know you, you would get that electric field and that electric electric field line but then these here would be divergent as it would spread out and you would also have electric fields up here and down here as well electric field lines so this is obviously not the case. So what must be happening in here is we must have something like this. We have to have like a plate, a spherical plate of positive charge. Okay. And it has to be positives everywhere. So a, we know that a plate, a, um, a, a, a disc, for example, will create a positive. We're ignoring the edge effects here on the edge. Okay. We will have a positive electric field out that way and a positive electric field out that way. And that's the only way to get this. Okay, so that actually answers part C for us, is what does that charge look like? Um, so now the question is, what is the net flux? So we're told that the net flux is E. We're given that. Okay, and we're told that the radius of our cylinder is, is R. And this distance here, actually we're told that distance is 2R, so therefore the radius is R. And so what we're looking for here is the total flux. So we have three surfaces. We have the, the end, or the left side of the, of, the, of the cylinder. And then we have the flux through the, through the middle part here, that, that cylindrical wrapper, plus the flux through the right side. Okay. And the flux to the middle part is pretty easy because there is no electric field going through the middle. It's all it's only going through the ends. So so this flux here is zero. The flux to the left, if we look at it carefully, the the differential area or the area of our surface in, uh, of our surface there is going to be pointing outward. It's going to be parallel to E. Okay. And so if we look at that flux to the left hand side simply e dot da okay i have to put saying simply this is um this is not simple stuff this is hard stuff and so the electric field is constant everywhere and e dot da they're parallel so e dot da simply becomes eda and because the electric field is constant we can pull it out of the equation okay and what is the integral of da it's simply the area now that is pretty simple. Integral of dx is x, integral of dA is a. And so here, the electric field times the area. And now what is the area of that surface, that end cap there? That's just the surface area of a sphere, of a, of a circle. So that's going to be e times pi r squared. Okay. And so that's going to be the flux to the left. Oh, big R squared, sorry, because that's what how it's defined. And then what is the flux of the right side? Well, it's going to be exactly the same. It's the same electric field, E, and it's the same area. So that's what the total flux is. And if we add it up, we get 2 E pi R squared. Okay, so let's type that in symbolically. 2 
E. And then we got to choose a Greek Pi. And I'm sure it would work if you actually typed in the number 3.14. And then we have R. And then we need to square that. And let's see if that works. Okay, there you go.